This time around, for close reading, let's take a look at a sort short passage from the text together. This is from page 2578, a little more than halfway down the page, if you're looking for it in your book. This is the way it was. Bare rock covered three quarters of the region. Towns sprang up, flourished, then disappeared. Men came by, loved one another, or fought bitterly, then died. No one in this desert, neither he nor his guest, mattered. And yet, outside the desert, neither of them, Daru knew, could have really lived. I put it in different colors to identify different parts of the passage, as you'll see in a second. So why did I select this passage? Well, the first part before the colon, uh, in red there, really struck me. After all the precision of this text, the care it takes with details, and its tendency to stick close to flat descriptions of reality, and if you'd like to see an example of that, just look at the opening paragraph for that kind of flat description of reality. So after all that, this is the way it was, struck me as a big statement. Sometimes that's what we expect from literature, that it will tell, you, tell us something bigger than the story it relates. It's a bold declarative statement, made in very straightforward language. That gets me thinking. Maybe Camus is talking about more than just this spot in Algeria. You know, the ambiguity of uh, the this and the way it was, the it there. Um, we don't really know what those refer to, but somehow this is the general condition of things. After the colon, the second half of the sentence kind of pulls the camera out, so to speak, to look at the whole region, right? Bare rock covered three quarters of the region. It's almost like we're suddenly in a helicopter looking down. The following sentence about the towns and the men expands the time scale, just like the previous sentence increased the scope. So suddenly, instead of just looking at now, we're looking at this whole history of the region. Now we know we're talking about something big and momentous, not just something that happened one day. We're being asked to think about the larger context. We can't view Daru's, we can't view Daru's actions outside of that context. The last two sentences are paired together by the and yet. So the first sentence cuts the residents of this desert off from meaning, and the second cuts them off from living anywhere else. And this is where I draw an immediate connection to Camus' idea of absurdity. This desert is the universe we live in. No meaning can be given to our lives here. However, we can't live anywhere else. This is existence itself, so existence and meaning can never coincide. Camus tries to reconcile that view of the universe as meaningless place with his opposition to nihilism, which is the belief that nothing matters. I don't think this story leads us to a nihilistic conclusion, but you'll have to see for yourself. All right, so what did I do here? I started with a little passage that seemed different somehow from the rest of the story. I pulled it out and I thought about it, and actually I wrote about it for a while. And as I was writing, I discovered a couple of things about the language of the passage and how our perspective for a moment diverges from the story's focalization through Daru. I also, uh, even now as I was just reading through this and talking to you, realized a couple of points that I made. So um, the way you do a close reading is by just working with it. You learn by doing. The last two sentences took me straight to the meme of absurdity, which was already in the back of my mind because I'm reading Camus. The point here is not that the last two sentences reflect his philosophical beliefs. You know, it's not the kind of thing you read and you go, Checkaroonie! There's absurdity! The point is that the form of the sentences themselves, their conjunction with and yet, and their positioning of this thought in Daru's mind, express those positions. This is not a copy of philosophy. This is the philosophy of absurdism. There is no separating it from stories like this one and sentences like these.